Imagine a landscape of verdant rolling meadows, but no woods or forests. Imagine how that would impact wildlife, the food chain, biodiversity, and the overall balance of the ecosystem. But that scenario may already be playing out here, just below the surface of our coastal waters. So we've seen a pretty big shift from the 1970s to now, where historically there were kelp forests and now we don't see as many kelp forests. They're not gone completely, but we just don't see as many of them. Kelp forests, underwater thickets where food and shelter are abundant for predator and prey alike. But the kelp is under stress from warming waters and invasive seaweeds that are carpeting the underwater landscape. They can handle the winter temperatures and they can handle our heat waves. Jen Dykstra is an assistant professor at the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. On this day, she is diving in the waters near Star Island, six miles offshore from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and is studying an invasive red seaweed from Asia, Dasasphania japonica. They're just reproductively so much faster than kelp. The other thing is that they have this longer growing season. The red seaweed is clearly visible on the ocean floor, crowding out the kelp, but it is also floating in the water column, which is how it propagates and spreads so quickly. They reproduce through asexual fragmentation. Uh, the red seaweed has fragments that drop off, and as they drop off, they settle on the substrate and they grow, and kelp doesn't have that. Kelp cannot affix itself to the places on the ocean floor taken over by the red seaweed. Dykstra is also keeping a close eye on cunner, a type of fish common throughout the kelp forests in the Gulf of Maine that are prey for larger fish up the food chain like cod and pollock. As the kelp forests dwindle, the cunner lose habitat and are much more exposed to predators. Definitely losing places to hide. So that's what we have shown in our studies, is that if there's a kelp bed, we find lots of fish. If there isn't a kelp bed, we find fewer fish. That could have impacts throughout the food chain, including on species of fish, crab, and lobster, important to fishermen and diners alike. They're more exposed to predators, because you don't have that second like canopy layer like you would a forest. Invasive seaweeds generally arrive on the hulls or in the ballast water of ships from all over the world. Many have found a hospitable environment here because of the warming waters and... Our winters are warming. And as our winters are warming, it allows non-native species that weren't able to handle really cold waters to be able to establish and now they can grow. Whereas historically, our winters were colder and that cold water, a lot of species would just die because they couldn't handle such cold temperatures. It is a problem that may only grow worse with climate change. But on this day, on this dive, there was a bit of hope. We found lots of red seaweed down there, which isn't a surprise. That's that's what we've seen for the past 12 years. But we also saw some kelp, which was really nice to see. Kelp can grow to 12 feet long, so you can imagine what a dense, lush underwater environment that usually creates. In addition to scuba diving, to keep an eye on the health of the seafloor, Jen and her team are also mapping the underwater environment using sonar and cameras to get a 3D image of how invasive species are affecting the seaweed habitat. Still to come, class.